Let's talk about the site and environment, the grounds, that are inspected during a home inspection. Property drainage. Well, during a heavy rainstorm without lightning, <laughs> it's really good for a homeowner to grab an umbrella and go outside and walk around their house and look around um, the roof and the property and how rainwater is being collected, directed, and discharged away. Now, during a home inspection, I love a rainstorm during a home inspection. I get my rain jacket on, my hat, I keep my tools covered and dry because I like to inspect a house at its worst condition, where it's taxed the most. During really hot summers, I'll take a look at the roof and the air conditioning. And in very cold winters, I'll grab my infrared, take a look at energy efficiency deficiencies. And during a rainstorm, ah, that's the best for me. But a homeowner should do this as well as part of a home maintenance plan, a routine task for their home maintenance. And as you know, InterNACHI believes that every home should be inspected every year. But boy, if you could inspect a home during a heavy rainstorm and then look for issues that may arise because of water movement, moisture intrusion, hmm. A rainstorm is a perfect time to see how the roof, the downspouts, and the grading are performing. Check the drainage patterns of the entire property. As a home inspector, we're not required to um, inspect far away from the house, let's say, like in the backyard, it could be another acre in the back, but maybe take a look at the first 10, 20 feet of the property surrounding the house itself. And then take a look at the property of the next door neighbor, especially if it's um, urban or suburban areas where the houses are close. The ground around the house should slope away from all sides. Downspouts, gutters, drains, surface drains, surface ditches should be directing water away from the foundation. So, most problems with moisture in basements and crawl spaces and some slab on grades are caused by poor site drainage. The ground should slope away from window wells, outside basement stairs, and other means of egress. The bottom of these areas, of each of these areas, should be sloped to a drain, and each drain should have piping that connects it to a stormwater drainage system, if there is one, or something that drains to either a discharge at a lower grade or into a sump pit that collects and discharges the water away from the building. A homeowner should monitor and main, maintain the drains and piping, and a home inspector should check them. Now, we're not required to um, check anything that's underground, obviously. Drains and piping should be open and clear of leaves, dirt, debris. A garden hose can be used to check water flow from a homeowner doing that. It goes beyond the standards of practice for a home inspector to use a garden, flow, uh, a garden hose. Now, hillsides. Where a home is situated on a hillside, it's more difficult to slope the ground away from the building on all sides, obviously. On the on the high ground side of the building, the slope of the ground toward the building could be interrupted by a surface drainage system that collects and disposes of rainwater runoff. Personally, I bought a home and it was situated on a hill and it had water issues and it was actually hydrostatic pressure cracking the foundation as well. The CMUs had mortar joint cracks. So I dug a ditch, filled it with some gravel, lined it, pipe and a sock, more gravel, and then um, some more lining and a little bit of topsoil and grass. Nobody could see. Swales can be used to direct surface water away from the foundation. And you can't tell if the ground is really puddling or not until there is a rainstorm during a home inspection or a checkup. So those swales are hard to actually see if they're actually properly installed, sloped away, directing water away and around the house, unless it's raining during a home inspection. And there are two general types of surface drainage systems. One's an open system, consisting of a swale, often referred to as a ditch, sometimes with a culvert at its end to collect and channel water away. And then there's the closed system, consisting of gutters and catch basins. Planters, uh, planting beds. Everyone likes to plant their plants right up against the house. Well, during a home inspection, check any planting bed adjacent to the foundation. 
there's built in a way often that um, traps water right up against the house. The structure around the planting beds acts like a dam, like a bowl, and traps the water up against the house foundation or structure. Flower planters should never be installed up against a home's exterior wall. Puddles are not good either. So look around the house as a home inspector, look for puddles or signs of standing water. The ground surface beneath decks, porches, and other parts of a building that are su supported by posts or cantilevered structures should be checked as well. It shouldn't have any low-lying areas, but everything should be sloped so that water will not collect and puddle there beneath those decks and porches. Settled backfill, like um, for a home that was just built maybe two or three years ago. Sometimes that fill, that backfill, settles. And settled backfill allows water to collect next to the foundation wall and penetrate into the basement or crawl space. Check the downspouts during a home inspection. Downspouts need adjustments. It's a part of a routine home maintenance plan. They always get whacked out of position or crushed or clogged. Water from the roof reaches the ground through, typically, gutters and downspouts or by flowing directly off the roof edges, which is not recommended in some climates because downspouts create concentrated sources of water in the landscape where they discharge is important. Downspouts should not discharge where water will flow directly on or over a walkway, a driveway, or stairs. The downspouts on a hillside building should discharge on the downhill side of the building. The force of the water leaving a downspout is sometimes great enough to damage the adjacent ground. So some protection at the grade, at that termination of the downspout, such as a splash block or a paved drainage chute is needed. In urban areas, it's better to drain the downspouts to an underground stormwater drainage system, if there is one, or underground to discharge at a lower grade away from the buildings. Water that flows directly off a roof, lacking gutters and downspouts, can cause damage below. Accordingly, some provisions in the landscaping may be needed, such as a gravel bed or paved drainage way. Regardless, unless it's an arid climate, as a home inspector, I frown upon a lack of gutters and downspouts. Now, a sump pump. You know what a sump pump is. It collects water. But a sump pump shouldn't recycle. Recycling is good, but not for a sump pump. When a sump pump is used to keep a building's interior dry, the discharge should drain away from the building and should not add to the subsurface water condition that the sump pump is meant to control. Sometimes, as a home inspector, I'll find the sump pump is working properly in the basement, discharging outside, but the discharge pipe is forcing the sump pump to simply recycle water. That groundwater isn't being discharged far enough away. And that's an easy fix for a homeowner. And some areas are just naturally wet. So during a home inspection, look around the entire site for the presence of natural springs, standing water, puddles, saturated, boggy ground, a high water table, or dry creeks or other seasonal drainage ways, all of which may affect the surface drainage.